In order to get ready, ready, because I know it's morning for you, in order to get ready to prepare your body for presentation to us, I'm going to limit you to five things. And I want you to tell me the five things that you did from getting out of bed to sitting here before us. What did you do? Uh, I opened my eyes, connected with my guides. Okay. I got up, made coffee. Uh, went in the bathroom, did the bathroom business thing, the bathroom business. Um, I went online and learned a new course. And I came downstairs and checked my, no, I actually did the crystal healing bed this morning. Ah, lovely. Okay. So you are, to all intents and purposes, although I can see the difference, at no point did you say you got dressed, but you are dressed. Right. At no point did you say you brushed your teeth. Well, you said did bathroom stuff. So yeah, deodorant. Yeah. Brushed my hair. <laughs> how, long did, how long did that take? Uh, Those things. Maybe. Sorry? Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. To be on your crystal bed as well? Or? No, my crystal bed was half there. Okay, tell me again. Reverse order. So, crystal bed, but I did more than five things. <laughs> no, I've limited you to five, so stick to those five. Yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah. So, crystal bed, uh, Facebook stuff, bathroom things, coffee, and um, connection, guide connection. Very good. Excellent. Do you ever wonder why detectives ask people who they think may have committed a crime the same things over and over and over again? And then somebody else comes in and asks them, but they jump into the middle. They say, oh, you said you, you watched the 10 o'clock news. What did you do before that then? What did you do after the 10 o'clock news? What, what was on the news? What, it must be something you remember from the news broadcast. Right. And then they do the good cop, bad cop type thing, which is kind of common interrogation practice. So we've got five things. And it took, to do those five things, how long? Two hours, maybe? A few hours. Okay. Yeah. How many? Probably two. Two hours. Yeah. Two hours to do those five things. So let's say um, you've now got one hour. What gives? Crystal bed would probably go. Okay. There. Um, see, actually, I did more stuff, though, than the five things. I only gave you the five important things. I also watched a 20-minute video on Facebook shops. Did, I you said just that say, did you just say, I only gave you the important things? Right. Well, this is at one step in there's many ways to do it, but it's one way of eliciting values. Right. So you gave me, off the top of your head, five things that you value or that you wanted to share right i mean there's things that might have happened that you don't want to share that's fine they're secret programs okay yeah the secret programs we say say what you like to everybody else but with secret programs we say tell yourself the truth mm. when you're half an hour to get ready and it normally takes you an hour and a half what gives what gives what changes what how does that impact upon your behavior? So one crystal bed went, what else went? Well, I wouldn't have watched the Facebook video. I would have basically, and I probably wouldn't have channeled. No, I always channel. So um, the most important things in the morning are coffee. <laughs> Channeling. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are, if I was to give anything up, those would be the two things I do. I would have channeled really quick, and then I would have come out and have my coffee and then came online. That's an interesting point because some people on a course will do everything because it's equally valuable, but they speed it all up. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Or quite often, um, if people are into ironing, nice white iron shirt, etc., they'll just check to see if yesterday's shirt's good enough. Or is there something in here I, can't, I don't have to iron? You know? Right. Um, 
interesting the shortcuts that people take. I know you haven't been detailed about your bathroom activities, fair enough. No. But the, the shortcuts people take. Oh, yes, I guess I would have had to do those things. <laughs> You'll be surprised. Right. One Indian lady on the course, we would, um, the men would take the mickey out of her for the rest of the course. I came in, leaving them to discuss secret programs. When I came back, there was only one lady on this course, which was quite unusual. And uh, one guy said, well, I found out something about women, particularly women with long hair. I said, what, 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 tell me about these secret programs of which you speak. And uh, she was all very embarrassed because she got very long, thick Indian hair. Mm -hmm. She would um, just wash the front. Mm. <laughs> and, think, and as long as the top, you know, the... the, the, the then that was good. And he says, I've never heard of anything like it, that women can just wash, wash the top of their head and not the rest of it. Mm. Well, how about that then? And I have to admit, it had never occurred to me either. <laughs> the things I've learned with people's secret programs. Right. Quite often somebody that does a, a full dental routine with the floss and the mouthwash and everything, it's just a quick brush, yeah. so still a brush. Some people grab the toothbrush and take it with them so they can do it when they get to work. Other people use those little devices you find at the train station that you chew and apparently they scrub your teeth. Breakfast usually gives. You didn't mention Yeah, breakfast. I often miss. I did eat breakfast, but I, I often miss breakfast. I was eating it as I was talking to Nick. <laughs> So Nick, I watch a video over eating breakfast, and I will do anything over brushing my hair. <laughs> wow! Yeah, my hair is really knotted, so it's a bit of a a program process. So, Nick, do you have that problem? No. Oh, with my hair, no, no problem with my long hair. No, definitely not. <laughs> so, what are five things you would have done to get your body ready? for presentation today, Nick? Take my shirt off, put my t-shirt on, because I'm sweating after our video. Have a coffee, have a cigarette. That's three. Hang on, is that three? Coffee and cigarette, okay. Yeah. Sort my bloody Wi-Fi out, for goodness sake. You know, I thought you were gonna say wife then. <laughs> no, wife. Wife, oh, yeah and make a coffee you already had a coffee i had two i had two actually another coffee okay <laughs> yeah. so we just got four is that fine four that's five take me through them again mr logic shirt yeah coffee cigarette wi-fi coffee okay so how long did that take you About an hour. So you got half an hour, what gives? One coffee and just do the rest quickly. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> because I wouldn't sit here in my uh, shirt with sweaty patches. So that needed to go. Um, would have had one cigarette. Could have coped to one coffee but needed to sort the Wi-Fi out so I couldn't have really got around any of that. So you've brought up an interesting point. But certain things remain constant and are just done more quickly. Though also this priority of secret programs kind of has a lot of flexibility in it, doesn't it, folks? That sometimes it might be dependent on where we're going and who we're meeting and how we're feeling, etc. There's usually two or three things that a person is adamant they would have to do. Let's think about from getting out of bed to seeing somebody that they respect or they wanted to look nice for or whatever. Is there anything that you can say that would absolutely, without fail, always be there? Both of you. Well, you'd have to go to the bathroom. Of course. Breathe. Eat. 
I wouldn't eat would not always be there for me. No, but at some point you'd have to, wouldn't you? Well you'd have to, but Yeah. I've gone to many appointments without eating and gone, Oh damn it, I should have eaten. Isn't it interesting <laughs> that Nick said at some point you would you would have to, wouldn't you? And you replied with the you as well. Hmm. Not the I. Now, the, I'm forcing the issue here because it also smacks of identity. You see how these two things are linked? Right. As soon as a person um, uses distancing language, no offence to anybody, I use it as well. And it, one of the ways, only one of the ways of using distancing language is when somebody specifically says, you would have to. At some point, you would have to, wouldn't you? So this is a very direct question. At some point, so he's left it wide open to the whole day or the whole week or the whole year. At some point, you would have to, so he's using the should, really, the have to, must, ought to, gotta, must. Let's change it, let's make it more... You must, when people get more animated, you must eat at some time, haven't you? Yeah. At some point in time, at some point, you you would eat, though, wouldn't you? Because even put, wouldn't you at the end? Uh, this put, this question's important to me, wouldn't you? I want you to answer, wouldn't you? Remember, this is neuro linguistic programming. The linguistics are important. And it's all about communication, communication between ourselves and communication with our own mind, of which there are two parts, as you know. In fact, there are several. But let's say conscious and unconscious to keep it easy. And like I say, and I noticed that you wrote it down, Teresa, and it's a very good point. Say what you like to everybody else. And you can, you can repeat this back to me in the future. Say what you like to everybody else, but tell yourself the truth. Now, aren't you tired with the same old story? Tell yourself the truth. Particularly when you're on your own, you know, tell yourself the truth. But we often don't. We often repeat the story we've told to everybody else. And then, like the guy on the stepping stones. You don't understand, Jenny. It's nothing to do with me, whether you quit your job or not. It's important to you. It's not important to me. I'm doing a course. Obviously, I want the best for you. I'd love you to do exactly what you want to do. For the rest of your life for a living but really it's not going to make that much difference to me I, I really hope that I can say in 12 months time that you're doing a wonderful job as one of the people that I've trained but if you if you have to carry on teaching or you want to carry on teaching that, that's your prerogative you know but it's all linked you see so as soon as we use distancing languages that's the time to listen to yourself that's where the importance is because Nick said directly, and it's just an, an analysis of language. This is what it is. Nick said directly, well, at some point you'd have to eat, wouldn't you? And you said, repeat. Oh, I've often shown up at appointments without eating. No, you didn't. No? You said you. I don't remember. Yeah. That's where the magic is. And that's where your magic is as a therapist or practitioner of NLP. The magic is when somebody says something that's really important, kind of under the radar, the unconscious mind is just blurted it out. And then you say, could you please repeat that using the word I instead of you? And I go, oh, I don't remember what I said. But then the person might remind you of what you've said and then you switch it to the I. I, I did say I. No, you didn't. You said you. Uh, I I don't think I'm a fair example though because I actually don't remember what is it. Do you think she's a fair example, Nick? Now that's where you've taken it personally. You see, you've put that to identity. I don't think I am a good example. This is about linguistics. It's not really about you. It's about the pattern of words. Yeah, and as somebody that has in the past and often will in the future probably, me, take myself very seriously and analyse the language, it's really easy for me and irritating for others. 
particularly when I'm doing a course to go, oh, do you see what you did there? Oh, do you see what you did there? And I do it for good reason. And it gets very apparent to me when somebody says, yes, but you would have to at some point, wouldn't you? Yeah, at some point, he softened it, at some point, you'd have to eat, though, wouldn't you? And you said something like, you, when you're busy, you don't do that. You, 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 you. I can't remember. Can you remember, Nick? He's a mute. Okay. Nope. But you didn't <laughs> feel it was odd, her response. You, no. We're very re <laughs> usually we're very respectful. You know what I said a while ago, that um, it's different. Um, when when you really want to um, hear the response, often we look away because you hear with other than your ears, as mm -hmm. you quite rightly know, Teresa. Now, yeah. out of politeness, at that point where the person's giving their unconscious stuff away, usually we're not looking because we're giving them space. And that is the time the therapist really <laughs> pays attention. It's like, oh, did you know? Children are lovely at this. Children, very small children, about the age of five, six, seven, beyond that, no. But up until that age, and we were all children once, we become kind of engrossed in human behaviour. Ooh, mummy said that. Ooh, daddy said that. Oh, mummy's crying. Oh, daddy, why did you do that? Oh. And it can be the other way around, of course. They've almost like got this awe and wonder about everything. They don't kind of, they haven't made a judgment at that point that this shouldn't be happening or any sort of opinion. It's like, oh, oh. And they're very observant of, um, where in adulthood we kind of go, oh, I'll ask this question and then I'll walk away. <laughs> Exactly at the time where you really need to pick up the answer. And so much is said under the radar. So much is said that's very important. And sometimes I'll get the signal, oh, that was important, that was really important. And I'll ask the person, what is it that you said that? Oh, I don't know. Well, surely we, if we want to be effective communication, I mean, even if it's just between friends, you know, Surely that was important. Why would you bother saying if it wasn't important? Oh, well, that thing, I just threw it. Oh, 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 oh. We all do it. Everybody does it. But often, those things are the important stuff. So, secret programs isn't just about things that we physically do. Secret programs are often secret to us, ourselves, and somebody else points it out. This is where our enemies can teach us far more about ourselves than our loved ones because they're more hot on <laughs> the discrepancies and incongruencies of our behaviour. But I mm. thought you said so and so. Did I? Yes, you did. I've got it written down here. Yeah. Mm. Or you said you would help anybody. You said you'd help anybody that came to you. Would you help a paedophile? Oh. Um, oh. Uh, well, you said everybody, so. And it makes, um, the reason why I'm bringing that up is it does, with presence, makes you very able to respond rather than uh, in a relaxed way with somebody that you wouldn't have to be on guard with. Sometimes when something comes from the wings or something takes us off guard, and it, it can be a loved one, but it's often not. When that's thrown in, that's the point to say, oh, what do I believe? What do I value? What behaviour should I be sh displaying now? What environment am I in? Well, I'm not really... Uh, so, uh, boom. When you get into that presence thing that you both understand, it's like, I really need to answer responsibly at this moment. And I'm going to put myself on the logical levels. And apparently I've said this thing. What did I mean? What did I mean? Okay. 
put yourself on those logical levels and your secret programs will be revealed to you. Your secret programs are revealed to you when you're under duress quite often. I did something quite innocuous by taking an hour off you or half an hour. But life will do a lot more than that, won't it? So yes, quite often what we're doing here is, is teaching ourselves and reminding ourselves all the stuff that we want to utilise to be good, as, good th as good as we possibly can as therapists or even as communicators and wives, husbands um, and friends, etc. We want to be the best we can be at being us. Though um, it's only by recognising that these techniques are also useful for us then that we can kind of do it for other people.